Hi everyone, welcome to Intubby in a Books, a channel where I, Intubby, talk about all my books and all my bookish things. I should probably change that because I mostly just talk about all my books and never my bookish things. Anyway, welcome to the channel, welcome back. Today I am doing a book review. I want to go back to doing single book reviews, which is actually how I started on booktube. Um, I just wanted to talk about the books I was reading and I wanted to review them in a way that was in a way that didn't require me to basically restrict the number of characters as I do on Instagram or in a way that didn't feel like it was it required too much effort which is at the time I was really into blogging and that felt like it required too much effort but now that I think about it sitting in front of a video editing it <laughs> as a lot more work than probably just putting pen to paper and reviewing books that way. But I'm here now, so let's just keep going. One of the things that I wanted to do at the beginning of my videos was um, spend like a minute or less than a minute talking about the books that I'm reading and how I'm feeling about them so that uh, by the time I get to the end, I sort of know where I was plot wise in terms of liking the book and where I ended up might be higher might be lower but that's just something I wanted to do the first book which I talk about or will be talking about in my whole video I'm not sure if it's going to come today or later is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov I think we've all heard about Lolita we know what Lolita's about I will say that the writing in this so far I'm not very far into it I'm on what page 13 the writing in this so far is good um it's I I really anticipate that it's going to get even better. Not the story, but the writing. Like, I, I'm one of those people who like how you write a book, and I think it's just going to get better. So, really excited to finish this. Um, the next book that I'm reading is The Secret History. Opposite to how I feel about uh, uh, Vladimir Nabokov's Nolita, by the way, because The Secret History by Donald Hart. I am yet to be haunted, compelled by the brilliance. I think Donna Todd is most likely a, a good writer. I hope so because I have the Goldfinch and it won a Pulitzer. So, uh, but this book's just—I think it's not—it's not like the writing isn't lyrical. It's not necessarily beautiful, but I think the story is like character-driven. I'm not really interested in the characters. Like, I just don't find any of them compelling, despite like all the little descriptions that I get out of them I'm getting like characteristics this person does this this one does this and I'm still like okay so I'm nervous um I'm about 131 pages into this this is my two book I'm not going into the office or going anywhere so <laughs> I won't be reading this for a while um I I'm gonna try honestly this weekend see if I can read it from the couch and see how that goes the next book which I picked up yesterday um which I started to read yesterday was To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara I get it the surname wrong every time Hanya Yanagihara Hanya Yanagihara To Paradise I'm liking To Paradise um as somebody who did just finish off a little life. I, it's very clear to me, anyway, that I'm reading the same book by the, uh, not the same book. I'm reading book a book by the same author. I think um, Hanya's um, writing style is very distinctly them. Uh, but we'll see as I make it through the book. So far, I think it's it's probably going to be a good book. Not great, but maybe just good. The other book that I've been reading is The Covenant of the Water. I've been reading this book since the end of October. And I must say that like, um, what is this? The Secret History. It's just like the characters aren't really compelling to me. And I think this is a character driven book. Because I mean, it, the book is set in India, which I did find quite I did like the, the the context of that. I did like the background as it's described to me, as it was being told to me, because this book starts in like in nineteen, in nineteen hundred. Um, I th I, but the characters just uncompelling to me. I'm so like bleh about all of them. So I don't know. We'll see how this book. The book I am reviewing today is "I Who Had Never Known Men" uh, by Jacqueline Hartman. Um, so the premise of the book is that there are these 40 women, one of whom was a child, um, living in a bunker. So these women are in a bunker, it's a really controlled bunker, and they have guards surrounding them. So in the bunker, they're given food to cook, 
never really given any spices or anything. It's basically what you imagine when you think people are living in a bunker. So they're obviously being held hostage. They can't leave the bunker ever. Everything that they need to do, like sleep, go to the bathroom, cook, is all situated within the bunker. And one of the, the, the 40 women went in as a child. So they literally call that person the child. Up until the end of the book, this person doesn't have a name. And this is the person who then writes the book. So the 40 women are living in a bunker. Um, and obviously they escaped. I think obvious because there was a book. So meaning somebody got out of the bunker and managed to put together something. So the women do escape. They all get out of the bunker. And now they are in this land where they're just trying to figure things out and trying to survive outside of the bunker um, and that's basically the premise of the book it's a short book 188 pages where you watch these women in the bunker you watch them out of the bunker and it just explores a multitude of things I think for me the thing that I liked the most about this book was its exploration of memory and how memory actually plays a role in what we recognize in our lives and what we think is a life um, one of the one of the first things that I highlighted when I read when I started reading the book, which is on page four, um, is now the child writing this. As far back as I can recall, I have been in the bunker. Is that what they mean by memories? On the few occasions when the women were willing to tell me about their past, their stories were full of events, comings and goings, men. But I am reduced to calling a memory the sense of existing in the same place with the same people and doing the same things. In other words, eating, excreting, and sleeping, which is basically what you, this person used to do in the bunker. They they just lived within the, the walls of the bunker, never knowing anything else. So can you just imagine, like, so much of what we have come to understand about our lives is what used to happen, what happened to us at some point, right? Whether or not we're, we're factual in that or we, we are, we, we, we aren't. The point is we all have come to build our lives around what our memories are. Um, so you remember what it was like to have the person that you really love give you a hug, for example. This is a memory that this child doesn't have because they've only lived in the bunker and they're not allowed physical contact. Um, so you remember what it was like when you had your first taste of ice cream or when a raindrop hits you for the first time. And this is something that this person doesn't have because they've been living in a bunker. And I think what we then see is once they're outside of the bunker is them creating new memories for themselves or creating new experiences for themselves. But it's all, all always very limited by their past experience because one of the things that, that happens is so in this first part that I just read out like there's a line that says on the few occasions when w the women were willing to tell me about their past um so that's because some of them were they had no idea how they ended up in the bunker they had lost some of their memories but a part of that is because there's so many parts where um the child feels excluded from the conversation because they feel like the women are keeping something from them. They feel like the women are intentionally holding back certain pieces of information. And to a certain extent, they're correct because the women are like, why do you need to know this information? Why do you need to know what a, what a car is? Because you're never going to be outside of the cage. So it doesn't really matter. You're never going to be outside of the bunker. So it doesn't really matter. But like even things like love, how people come together, how children are made, how what something tastes like they they never told those things and one of the reasons because the women from their experience think what good it what good is it to tell you something that you'll never have and they just don't want to remember they're like but the child has no context so for them it's like no matter what you tell me the memory that you think that i'm going to miss and feel like i'm missing out so for example love that 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 feeling of falling in love the child is just like i can't miss that <laughs> i don't know what that is so your desire to keep me safe by not telling me about the things that I've missed out on mean nothing to me because I don't know what those things are. Um, so that's one of the things that I liked about that book, the exploration of like, what does it mean to be a person who has no basis for so many of the things that we feel form personhood? What is your understanding then of the world as you see it? And I think that's where I had a bit of a disconnect with the book, right? So. 
it, the book makes it very clear um, that the child, the author of this book, doesn't know what a lot of things are. But in its delivery, which it feels a bit nitpicky to say this, right? But in the delivery of the book, it does come across as though the person who wrote this book has lived a full-on life and had a full-on experience of what the world is. Um, so I don't want to say there are some gaping holes. I mean, of course, the idea that they have never known men, that's a really big gaping hole because, well, it's on the title, but because they lived in the bunker and then when they get caught out of the bunker, they never actually met any men. So they don't know what it's like to encounter the opposite, the opposite sex like that. Um, but I still think there were things in the book that I felt like um, their recognition of those things didn't make sense to me because I, I, I think in my mind what I thought was even if somebody were to explain what certain things are, um, so for example high-heeled shoes, <laughs> just saying, and I'd never seen them, I wouldn't be able to connect those dots when I did see them. Or one of the things that they talk about, one of the things that's discussed in this book is beauty, or what beauty is, and the, the, the protagonist of the child talks a bit about, you know, this one person said, I would be pretty, for example, but they don't have a basis for that. Um, and I just, I just think there were some things that in the book, I felt like I wouldn't be, have been able to recognize had I been in this person's um, position. And maybe that's because that, that was the intention of the book to say, to question, right? To question what it is, how, how we recognize things in the world, how we recognize beauty, how we recognize art, how we recognize um, literature. Do, do things really hold as much value without the context of what the world is? It's really hard to explain what I mean by some of these comments without breaking open the whole gist of the book because it does it is such a short book and it packs such a punch but and explores so much right so it's a short book it packs a punch it explores so much and it's really hard to review without giving away a lot of what happens in the book but I think for me, I took away the theme of memory, um, exactly what your memories mean. I think I highlighted quite a few things uh, about memory, um, exactly what your memories mean and how they dictate how you recognize the world. And then number two, I took away the theme of do things really, does humanity, not things, is your humanity different based on your understanding of what's going on? on in the world. Um, do you have the same appreciation for certain things, like for example a hug? Do you have the same appreciation of that if that's not a part of, that's not a part of your life? You don't know that people who give each other hugs, that's a form of expressing comfort or trying to be there for somebody else. Then what does a hug mean to you? Um, what does beauty mean to you when somebody says you're beautiful? If you have no concept of that, what does any of that mean to you? I think those are the things that are explored in the book. I think for me, my point around the fact that I wanted the loop to be closed still stands. So there is a mention of Proust on the very first page. Then there is a mention of Shakespeare. I think I still have questions about where the, the protagonist is when they write this book because I thought they ended up in a certain place. But from what I'm seeing <laughs> on that first page and the number of books they have, I'm just, I'm just not connecting the dots. And maybe it's a really small thing and I shouldn't be focusing so much on that. But for me, I think there is a bit of a, I needed that loop to be closed. It didn't at all ruin the book for me. I still enjoyed the book. I thought the book was very unique in how it was written. Because had this book been written from the perspective of one of the women who had lived outside of the cage, it would have meant something completely different. So had it been somebody who had lived outside of the cage and then was in the cage, whether or not they had lost some of their memory, it would be completely different because that person would know what it's like to ache for comfort of somebody touching you when you're crying. Whereas the child, 
they didn't really get any of that. So I think the book is good because it was written from the perspective of somebody who had no idea what it was like to be human. And there's so many parts in this book where this person was like, if that's what being human is, then I'm missing that part. Because there's just so many things and so many chunks of the world that they didn't have. Um, so that's what I think the book gave. I don't know if <laughs> my, my thoughts were like a bit convoluted around this book. I really did try and make this short. I don't think that's what's going to happen but I do recommend that you read the book it's a short book so you know it has that going for it but I think it, it'd be good to have different people have different perspectives of, on, on this book and I even if I didn't like a book I would never recommend that people not read a book it's just one book that I wouldn't recommend that people read but again I'm not gonna mention it here it's not important but even books I haven't liked I've always felt like they I, I wouldn't tell people not to read them so this book I actually did like so I'm recommending that you read it if you want to um, so that is my review of I Who Have Ever Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman um, thank you for joining me thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for commenting thank you for subscribing um, it feels really good to be back here I will see you in the next one and remember to be kinder than you think is necessary.